What's going on, everybody? Josh Engelman for AwesomeO.com, and I am back with my NBA DFS contenders on FanDuel for Tuesday, May 17th, Game 1 of the Eastern Conference Finals between the Miami Heat and the Boston Celtics. Now, before you do anything, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell so you know when everything goes live. Follow me on Twitter, at Josh Engelman. Let me know in the comment section who your favorite plays are, and then go sign up at No House Advantage using the promo code AWESOMO so that you can get yourself $25 on your first deposit. Now we're rounding out the bottom of my top 10. Tyler Hero, Al Horford, Derek White, Robert Williams, and Marcus Smart on the outside looking in. Who will be my favorites? My top five plays for today? Time to find out. In at number five, we got to go to Gabe Vincent. He is 7,500. I got him projected for about 20 fantasy points, and he ends up in the optimal lineup 40% of the time. We know already that there's no Kyle Lowry, so Gabe Vincent's minutes should be pretty set here. Now, he could play more, but this feels like a pretty comfortable projection at this point. 28 minutes, and then just basically single digits straight down the line outside of usage. 16% usage, 9 points, 2.5 boards, 4 assists, a steal. You're really only using Gabe Vincent in the utility spot. That shouldn't be all that surprising. For him to show up in MVP, star, or pro, He's got to be one of the three, basically one of the three highest scorers on the slate. And I think that's probably, I don't want to say impossible, but it's pretty close to impossible. And you can tell based on those percentages, 3% likelihood to be at MVP, 4% at star, 6% at pro. We're talking about 13 there, give or take some rounding, 28% likelihood at utility. That's where you get the value out of Gabe Vincent. Gabe Vincent allows you to pay up a little bit more at those three bigger spots for basically most of the guys that we're about to talk about look at the jump in tiers from five to four jason tatum in at the number four spot he is fifteen thousand five hundred, projected for 44 and a half and he is in the optimal lineup 66 percent of the time i gave tatum 40 minutes that seems to be what he's doing at this point 30 percent usage here for tatum 26 points seven boards five assists two stocks and Spread out across all four positions, or well, roster spots, I guess is the better way to say that, but way bigger concentration at the top end. 20% likelihood at MVP, 18% at star, 17% at pro. Then you get a little bit, the slight opportunity to get Jason Tatum in at the utility at just 10%, but the large majority of the time, he's either not a part of the optimal lineup, or he's one of the three highest scorers on the slate. I don't think that's gonna be all that shocking to you guys, Maybe you guys will end up being shocked by the order of these top four guys, but don't get it twisted here. The top four people on this list are on a completely different level than the bottom part of this list. You see that gap, the jump of 26% odds. There's a very clear line in the sand. At number three, I go to Jalen Brown, just 13,000 projected for 39 He's in the optimal lineup 68% of the time. So, you know, just a slight nod over Tatum, but it's the salary. You Saving $2,500 is no joke. 38 minutes here for Jalen Brown, 29% usage, 23 points, seven boards, four assists, a stock and a half. He's gonna basically just going to do a little bit less than Jason Tatum in general and a, a little bit more or less <laughs> in terms of facilitation. The assists go down. But... Talk about a just absolute flat spread. Jalen Brown works everywhere in your lineup construction. So play around when it comes to ownership because you can get a little bit of a discount. And I think Jalen Brown's the same everywhere. 18% at MVP, 18% at star, 15% at pro, 17% at utility. That's basically just clear across the board. It doesn't really matter where you put Jalen Brown. You can make a realistic case for it. And that allows you to make some really interesting lineup construction decisions. In at number two, we've got Jimmy Butler, but this is basically a tie at the top. He's 15K, projected for 45. He's in the optimal lineup 71% of the time. Honestly, I could probably give him the 40 minutes and it would make sense, but I feel like 38 is a little bit more realistic in game one. Although we are in the Eastern Conference Finals. 28% usage, 23 points, seven and a half boards, five and a half assists, and two and a half stocks here for Butler. Look, he's going to look fantastic. He's going to look even better now with no Kyle Lowry on the floor. I don't see a gigantic difference between him or Brown or Tatum in terms of rosters for this slate, but I do give that slight lean to Jimmy Butler. 25% likelihood at the MVP, 
20% at the star, 14% at pro and 11 at utility. So if you're going to Butler, you're probably focused a little bit more on that MVP and star combination. But honestly, you can kind of make it work no matter what you want to do. You're likely going to need three out of the top four guys on my list. And one of those guys is likely to have a not as great game as you would want. Figuring out who that is is going to be the pretty difficult decision point for right now. But I like the price for Butler, and I really enjoy getting to him in that MVP and star spot. I know he's going to be popular there. Very typical cash build is probably going to have Butler in one of those two locations. Locations? That's not the right word, but we'll keep going. Now, before we get to that number one contender, one last reminder. Hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and hit the notification bell so you know when everything goes live. Follow me on Twitter at Josh Engelman. Let me know in the comments section who your favorite plays are. And then go sign up at No House Advantage using the promo code AWESOMO. Number one contender for today, splitting the tie. That's Bam Adebayo. 12K, projected for 38. In the optimal lineup, 71% of the time. 35 minutes here for Bam. This is actually, it should be at least, a, a much better series for Bam. You know, Embiid is a lot. Even if he's injured, uh, they don't have that same sort of situation going on for the Celtics. So 35 minutes, 3% usage, a, a double double, 17 and a half points, 11 boards, two and a half assists, and two and a half stocks. Bam, you can use in the inverse to Butler, though, which is very interesting. 17% at the MVP, 14% at star, 16 at pro. You can get Bam out of bio in the utility spot 24% of the time. That's where he is in the optimal lineup more frequently. That $12,000 price tag is really helpful on a day like today. My assumption is that he's going to go slightly over-owned in the multiplier categories and not owned enough in the utility. And that's where I'm going to like to get to him a little bit more. Just squeeze a little bit more value out if you can. But whether it's Bam, Butler, Brown, Tatum... One minute either direction can move these guys around, but it's very clear who the top four guys are today. And in this case, it's pretty clear to me who the number one guy is. A spam out of bio. Alrighty, folks, that will do it. Those are my NBA DFS contenders on FanDuel for Tuesday, May 17th. DraftKings version is around here somewhere, so check it out. Good luck tonight, everybody. Win some money. Back again tomorrow morning for another edition of The Contenders.